All right, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. Today, let's talk about triaging scar tissue. This is fun. Everyone gets this stuff wrong. All right. <laughs> And we're back. Okay, I apologize, my phone is just going off like crazy and I have this stupid Apple Watch now because my wife wants to make sure that if I fall down and die, she knows about it the moment that it happens. And it just keeps going off and it's driving me nuts. And I hate it, there's so much noise, noise, noise. I'm getting a bit grinchy. Anyways, um, scars. I see a lot of people talking about scars and tattooing. So ah, you gotta wait a certain amount of years, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And, uh, I always like to ask people when they say, I just say, why? And they say, well, it's not healed enough. You know, well, why? It's the best question that you can ask. You should do a video just on asking the question why. When you're learning tattooing and the person who's training you is, is training you to do something that is a permanent cosmetic modification of the body, uh, ask why. Why is the best question? Ask it until you are blue in the face. Always ask why, because if you don't get an answer that makes sense, or if you feel pressured to accept the question's response, um, deny inputting that information in your brain until you find someone who you can trust, right? But don't trust me, you don't know me, I'm just a dude on a YouTube thing, I don't know. Talk to doctors, talk to, talk to surgeons, just email them, you know what I mean? Go find them at a coffee shop, be like, hey, you're a surgeon, I gotta ask you a question. Get, get responses from people who are better educated than the people that you know, because at, like, there's a difference between being a scientist and being an artist. And the industry has worked really hard to define itself as an art career. I would not take cancer research stuff from a tattooer. On average, maybe there's one out there, two out there, or I know a couple that maybe I'd listen to, but that's stiff. I wouldn't just take it from Johnny down the street and it was 320 an hour, three hour minimum, does black and gray hand tattoos. I, I would ask him where to go and get some fennel, you know? Anyways, let's talk about scars. <laughs> so I, this is all off the dome too, people. I hope you know this. So don't prepare for any of this stuff because I'm lazy. Um, more often than not, we're going to have people coming in with scars just from life. Maybe it can be from self-harm, maybe it can be from surgeries, maybe it could be from birth, maybe it could be from body mods, it can be from anything that we're thinking about, right? And they wanna get some tattoo work over top of it. So we have to try to figure out initially uh, how we think that the skin is gonna to react to the procedure of a tattoo, how it's gonna treat the pigment moving forward, right? And then how is it gonna look after like we beat the Jesus out of it, right? <laughs> like scars can be really scary because it's an imperfection in the skin, right? Like we're all trained to tattoo forearms. Like that's just how it works, right? When you get into tattooing, like the webbings of fingers or inside the ear, nostrils, the roof of the mouth, the eyelids, that stuff starts getting really creepy and kind of weird, right? It's like tattooing armpits. You just don't know how it's gonna go. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Anyways, when we're looking at scars, there's a few things we need to look out for. And this is one of the hardest things I think I, I, I have oh, translating to people, and I don't know if it's gonna come over well on a video, but let's just give it a go, right? The first thing is, if these political messages don't stop, I'm going to murder someone. Not really, sorry YouTube, I'll bleep that out, you fucks. Um, so is the, is the scarring fixed or mobile, right? This is the, the biggest one when we start triaging because on, on smaller scars, we'll say, or ones that aren't like really deep, superficial scars, things like this, the fixed or mobile question is gonna determine how aggressive that we can do our tattoo, right? When we look at the skin and we take our little visual patch test where there's like a scar that's going across this, right? Area that we have on someone. Doesn't matter visually what it looks like. If it's lumpy, if it's bumpy, if it's any of that stuff, it doesn't matter. If we take it and we pull a little bit with our finger, just push on it, do we see the top layer of skin move, right? If we move it back and forth while everything else underneath it stays still? That's fixed or mobile. If we see it move with the skin and it feels like it's adhered, that's a fixed scar, right? If we see it when we're moving it back and forth, it's mobile. If it's mobile, that's blowout city, right? reason why is, is the skin is it's not fixed right 
when we have our epidermis that's basically just sliding over top back and forth, there could be an additional cavernous space underneath it that when we start using our needle to implant any of the pigment, it hits that void space, right? It can be fluid filled, it could be just a bunch of extra cells that are just aggregated there to try to keep the epidermis on top of it because it was such a deep wound, whatever. As soon as the pigment that hits this, it just goes and cobwebs out. It'll find any of those open spaces because the structural integrity is so far gone that it just runs. So when you're doing, it doesn't mean you can't tattoo it, right? It just means that that should guide your information that you're giving the, the client or the person who's getting the tattoo as to how much detail can be put into that space. Now, it also should influence our stretching, right? If you take a reciprocating needle that's going two to 300 times a second and you're bearing down on this, you know, healed wound and you start to carve into it, it will literally like split open, right? The structural integrity isn't there. So you have to be careful with it, be gentle, right? We start getting into stuff like this fixed or mobile, especially if you're like, just doing it kind of on the fly, go in and be gentle. Give a couple little dots with a liner and see what happens to it, right? Test your depths a little bit, a little bit more. Try to blow it out, see what happens, right? If you can't see if it's gonna be fixed or mobile. And a little bit of a push. Usually what'll happen is you'll go in pretty light and you'll see that stuff, I mean, instantly just, it'll just poop out. It's, it's wild, right? <clears throat> so that's it. it, it if you have mobile tissues over top of scars, especially if you have like self-harm scars and there's a ton of them in the area, this is gonna dictate that you can't do a bunch of really fine line stuff on there just because aging is just, it's gonna be a nightmare, right? So we wanna try to minimize the amount of detail the less fixed that these scars are, especially if there's more of them, right? If there's a lot of them in an area, we can't just do, like you can, you can do it, you can. It's extremely technical and difficult to get it to stick right. There's also some stuff like scar ablatements, which I think, I don't know, I'm gonna be pointing at nothing if we don't have that video, but I'm pretty sure I made a video about scar treatments with uh, tattooing, um, where you can try to remove uh, some of the innocuous tissues that are connecting underneath this and you can, rehab the actual space where the, the tissues have become mobile and get them to reattach and then get them into a better state so you can actually do the tattoo. <clears throat> it's technical, yeah. There's only a couple people I know who can do it properly. There's a lot of people who claim to, which they're dumb. Uh, but yeah, that's what we'll look for. Those number one is gonna be fixed or mobile, right? And there really is only two on this. I mean, Guy Aitchison, I think has done a lot of work with scar cover-ups more recently. Um, I've seen a couple of his posts before I went off social media. And it, the artistic approach to this stuff is fucking phenomenal. So if you want to look up his stuff, it's good. Mine, mine's more on like the science-based side of this. I think if you were to marry the two, it would, it would work really well. But that's also, you probably need some instruction. If you're new, this is like your first year or two into tattooing, try this stuff, right? Like, be paying attention to stuff. Get get physical. Our job is touching people. You're like a doctor, right? Get in there, see the stuff, and start learning the, the different values that you're going to see across the board. It's going to be based on race, age, you know, uh, like demographics, uh, what the lifestyle. It can be elevation. I mean, there's so many variables that are going to come into the people that you tattoo, and everyone's going to scar differently. So the more you see it, the more you get comfortable with it, the better you'll probably be in the future. <laughs> My microphone's up there now, forgot. Uh, uh, next one, and this will be the last one because I think my battery's probably gonna run out soon. Um, we wanna see texture, right? The texture of the scar is really important to take into account. I think this is one of the things I'd seen Guy do. Um, if you see something that is bumpy and raised, right, is, is far different than something that's smooth and flat, right? We have hypertrophic tissues versus, you know, things that are assumed to be keloids, not friggin' keloids, but everyone says they're keloids. Uh, then that's, that's different, right? If we have something that is naturally, our eyes can pick up different topography, right? And we're trying to tattoo into this, you know, it, it's gonna change how things look. You're gonna wanna use those contours, those shapes, to accentuate the actual tattoo design, right? As something that is naturally higher up on the skin, we wouldn't want to put it into the background <laughs> because it is not going to show well, 
right? It's going to be the background, but it's closer because there's shadows and space and it's 3D. It's not 2D on the white surface like your tablets are, right? Well, meanwhile, if something is smooth and flat, you can kind of do whatever you want to. Sometimes they're even recessed, right? You'll have a scar that goes into the body and it sets backwards, right? And those are like aged hypertrophic tissues where they come in and it like literally like moves across. You get those are like deep surgical wounds sometimes heal out like this on some people, right? How can you use this to your advantage when you're getting into actually doing the design, right? So if you're looking at scars and you're, you're you know, you're checking to see how they feel, how you imagine that they may react, create a hypothesis on that, and you're coming into the artwork creation, these things are really, really important to keep in mind. Don't just do a design. <laughs> and be like, let's send it. No, take it. Take it into account, right? If you have a mapping of somebody's body and they're getting a sleeve or something, right? And you're getting a sleeve, boop, 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 dee, 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 And we have our space mapped out, right? Um, and you see that there's scars on their arm. Mark them out, right? And put some notes off of it. Like this one's raised, right? We've got, this one's like an inoculation one or whatever. Uh, so we'll do this one's like bumpy and low, right? And then start marking them out and see how that can influence your design as you're moving forward. Don't just pretend that they're not there and hope for the best. Because if you do that and you don't understand whether they're fixed or mobile or what even the texture is, the design's going to suffer. You could cause more harm, right? And then you're just, you're being bad at your job. That's it. Let's do these two. This triaging scars. Second video back, baby. Uh, so this again, we're doing uh, Minecraft. Uh, you can just come in, hang out, chat, ask questions if you want to. I'm just gonna get DMCA'd by a bunch of uh, music that we're playing in the background. I don't care. Um, you can just come in and hang out if you want to. It's Wednesdays uh, at, at 8 p.m. Pacific time right now. We'll see how long this goes. I'm building skin. It, it, it's gonna be weird and pass that like subscribe buy a sweater don't they're too expensive <laughs> everything is too expensive if you want to just become a member of the show it's a buck a month i, I give you nothing but uh, my eternal uh thanks maybe i'll start naming you guys off once a, a year <laughs> i'm so bad at youtube anyways this is ryan from better tattoo and signing off